Welcome to the third edition of uh, 10 very quick, simple little Ableton Live tips to help speed up your production. This one's going to be a little bit more production focused and a slightly a little bit more advanced than last time. Okay, so the first tip I've got here is use the utility for gain control. Um, what I mean by this is if we load up in a utility over here, you see the utility has this gain knob. This is really good because you can use this as a volume. We're at 0 dB, we can go down to negative 35. If you use this instead of actually automating the volume here, that means that later on in the, in the track you can actually uh, change the overall volume even though you have volume changes. For example, this part here I don't want, so I'm going to go into, well, let's say I did it with the volume first, we'll just put that back on 0. If I selected this area and drag down, what will happen? That's all good. But the problem is, if I want to actually change the overall overall volume of the track later on, I can't actually do that because I've actually inserted some points. So we're going to Control Z that or Command Z that. If we pick the gain and use that instead, but we can now still move the volume up and down to make things quieter or louder. The second tip here is if you're in a live situation, this is a really handy one um, if you're playing and you need to get some more sound but uh, you can't really stop the music to sit down and figure out how to do a proper mix or something. Um, I use this quite a lot. Uh, what you do is you simply just use a limiter. So instead of trying to push sound out of the volume like, like so and getting things into the red, you can keep this on zero and you can push the gain on the limiter up instead and so what will happen is it'll start actually compressing instead of clipping and you'll get a much fuller sound but you'll still keep things in the red, you won't get any clipping. And you can see we're still in the green here. Just don't do it too much or you get told off. Number three is a, quite a, a simple one if you have, um, it's to save CPU and um, a good way just to keep uh, things nice and simple. If you've got a few elements in your track which all are being sidechained by the same source, for example a kick drum, um, and everything's being sidechained in the same way, instead of just loading up a, um, a compressor and sidechaining it on each track, um, you can set up an individual track specifically for sidechaining. So if I go down to the bottom here, I'm going to create myself a new track. I'm going to call this side chain. I'm going to load up my compressor in here. And we are taking the we're taking it from uh, the bass drum of the kit. So I'm going to open up my side chain, turn the side chain on, select my kit track. We're just going to have a listen for a minute to see what we've got here. So we're going to turn the EQ on so we, and put it into a low pass. So we've just, just got the kick drum coming through. A bit more Q. That'll do us great. So now we've got our side chain track all set up. I'm going to turn off the um, the monitor here. I'm going to turn off the solo here, and let's have a listen to what I want to send to the side chain. <laughs> Okay, I want to send the synth to the sidechain, so every time the kick hits, uh, the synth is going to sidechain, so I've selected sidechain from the drop down menu here of where the output of that channel is going, and I also want the bass to go, now I've actually grouped up all my bass here, I'm actually going to just send the, the master group of all the bass, bases that are grouped to that sidechain as well. And just make sure you turn this to on. Now if we go into the sidechain and bring the threshold down, both the pads and the um, bass lines are going to be sidechained by that kick drum. You can hear the snares coming through a bit there as well. But that's a really good way to cut down CPU and keep things simple. You can just have a sidechain track there ready to send, send stuff off to. Now this one's a very a very subtle effect, but it makes quite a lot of difference. It's a, a it's um it's a way of kind of tuning um, something like percussive, or you can do it with anything really, to the actual key of what your tune is currently in, but without actually having to transpose it around. Um, so I've got this uh, this this little bongo thing here in a pad. I mean, you could move the transpose around here and try and find the key that the pads are in. But we're not going to do that. Um, 
this 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 is a, a quick little way to actually get a slightly tuned feeling to it without actually changing the transpose. So I've loaded up an EQ8 here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the poles here, I'm going to give it lots of Q, so it's a really, really sharp sound. And if I play it now and move this around, you'll actually be able to hear a note. So what you can do now is you can actually move this around until you can hear um, this pole, this little note that's gaining played since you're boosting the um, volume of this particular little band so much, um, you can get this in tune with the actual, um, with the track. So let's try and find a place. Now you can hear how that's kind of in tune. Now what we can do is we can slowly bring the gain and the cue down until it gets to a point where you can still just slightly hear that particular tone of the sound, but um, it's not uh, intrusive like it currently is. Just like that. Now if I just solo this, we can have a listen to it without the EQ8. And turn it on. And bring those pads back in. Where are they? So there you go. Very, 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 very subtle effect, but um, it does make quite a difference if you uh, take the effort to do that to uh, percussion, because um, it's not always cool having all your um, percussion tuned with your tune. We're just going to keep on this percussion one again here. This this next tip is um, to give a little bit more of a human feeling. Now a good way of doing this is by, by using velocity on the individual notes. You can see here I've got uh, velocity. Uh, so each each of these notes is playing a different volume. That one's lower than that one. And this is the loudest and etc. That gives it a nice... So that's all good, but if we load up an, our, our impulse, you can do this in a drum rack with the simpler as well, we can actually turn on the filter here. And you can see if we bring this filter down. And bring the velocity up to 100%. You can hear that when the notes are actually louder, this cutoff filter, this low pass filter here, it's set on low pass 1 here, is actually um, dampening the note a little bit. So, the, so and theoretically the softer the drummer hits, the more dampened the note's going to be. If we bring up the resonance quite a lot, you'll be able to hear... Um, how that works. If we go in here and add some lower notes, let's uh, just make all these really low, holding down the command key and dragging. Select your notes, command key, drag. Just a very quick way to give it a nice human touch. Tip number six. Now, this is a quick way to give your lead or whatever you want a, a kind of a rhythmical gating effect, um, very simply using the auto filter. So I'm going to load an auto filter up here. Now, of course, we've got, we can, um, we've got a low pass. We've got a set on low pass. We can move this around. If we use the LFO and turn the amount up, it'll move this for us, so it'll move it up and down, so we get a kind of a, a sweeping effect. And if we, as we bring the rate up, it'll do it faster. Um, we're going to turn phasing off at the moment, that's what's making it go in the left and right ears. It's very, very cool. But if we change the shape to a square wave and bring the amount up to its maximum, then now it's going to uh, play the sound and then have no sound. Play the sound and have no sound. It's going to cut the sound completely and then open it up. And we can do this however fast we want. We can also turn on the uh, sync here, so we can actually do it in time. Now this tip is to show you how to create a very simple um, 
multi-band compressor with a sidechain, which is something that the multi-band compressor in Ableton doesn't currently offer. Um, this is handy f uh, if you have something, say I've got a, a bass line here. And I want to compress this bass line and I want to sidechain it so that when the kick plays the bass gets out of the way. So we would do that by loading up a compressor, bringing on the sidechain, selecting the audio from the kick, and then bringing the threshold down. So you can hear now that bass line is getting out of the way of the kick. However, I just want the sub of the bass line to get out of the way of the kick. I actually want the bass line, the high end of the bass line, to stay there. I don't want it to get out of the way. I want the sub to get out of the way because that's the thing that's going to clash with that kick drum. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up an audio rack instead. Open up our chains. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert an EQ8. And we'll call this chain low. We're going to duplicate the chain by Command or Control D. We're going to rename this to High. Now if we go into the low one, we select the last pole and we turn it into a low pass and we bring that down to around, let's say, 100, well, say 112 hertz. So now this particular chain is only going to be leading through the sub side of things, right? Good. On the high end, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to select the first pole, we're going to turn it into a high pass and bring it up to about so on roughly where we had the other one so now when that bass line plays we're getting the low end through here the high end through here now we can actually put a compressor after this low part we can turn on the side chaining and we can take the input from the kick and bring the threshold down So now just the sub is currently being sidechained, the high is completely untouched. And of course you can have as many of these as you want, you could have 4 or 5 or 20 if you really really wanted to. Tip number 8, this is a quick way to get lots of quick little funny sounds into a tune. Um, I do this a lot, it's a really good way to put in um, some rhythmical things when you're just starting a track just to get an idea of of how things can go. It usually sparks us some interesting ideas. This is a bit of a funny one. So I've got this loop here which I'm pretty unhappy with at the moment. So well I just need a little bit more. So I'm going to insert an audio track and I'm simply just going to use the microphone of my computer here. Um, I'm just going to hit record, hit, hit record, record up, up here, here. I'm going to solo, solo the track, track so, so I don't get distracted, distracted. And, I'm and I'm just going to make, make a few, few quick, quick funny, funny sounds. sounds. Just, just like that. that. Going to turn that off. So now we've got these funny sounds here. Excellent. But what we can do is now if we right click on this, we can choose slice to new MIDI track. And what this does is it takes the audio sample that we've done and it cuts it up at certain parts and then turns that into a drum rack and a MIDI track for us. So if we go create one slice per, keep this on transient, what that means is it's going to go through and find each individual little hit that I've done and slice it there. So that means each new little hit in our MIDI track will have um, will start on a new sound. And that's all we need to do. If we click OK, it'll go ahead and work. Donk, 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 donk. Like so. And it's given us this new MIDI track here. And it's also given us a, uh, a MIDI clip which uh, plays those uh, little funny sounds that I've done in time to how they actually are. So we don't actually need this audio track anymore. Let's solo this track and have a listen. Cool. If we go into this uh, drum rack here, you see we can play individual hits. It's a bit of computer noise coming through there, but it doesn't matter. So now if we delete this MIDI clip, uh, we'll just insert a new one, and we'll just start playing our loop and adding things in. Just stretch this out a bit so we can see. Thank you. 
lots of fun, quite silly. Um, you don't have to use your own voice, you can use anything you want with this. Just a uh, yeah, quick way of getting some something happening. If you're stuck in a rut, it's a really good thing to do. This tip is to give your sub bass a little bit more of a punch. A very, very simple, quick way to do it. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but this is a really quick fix way of doing it. Um, doesn't work for every type of tune, but um, just give it a go if you're if you're finding your sub is lacking something. So here's my sub bass line. Now I'm using operator here, pretty much every synth you'll be able to do this. It has a pitch envelope, so what that means is if I turn the pitch envelope on, this line here is actually going to determine the pitch of the note each time the note is played. So if I was to bring the start of this up really, really high, you can see the peak is uh, going up here to plus 36 semitones, you can go up to plus 48, we'll do it about plus 36. That means that the note's actually going to start 36 semitones higher than it actually is until it goes down to the sustain um, thing here. And the, how quickly it does this is determined by the decay time. Hang on, we'll get the sustain back down to zero. If we move the decay time shorter, it means that it's going to quickly, on the start of each note, hit it from a high and go down low really quickly. If we leave it really long... Oh, we have to make sure that we turn the pitch envelope up first, sorry. Make sure you turn the percentage up. Um, go up to 100% just so we can hear how it works. You can hear the decay time is way too quick. You can start hearing how, how to fix it. And if we get it really short. Almost like a kick drum if you want. And then we can bring the pitch envelope percentage down. This is how much of this actual envelope is applied to the pitch of the sub. You can bring the peak down a bit if it's a bit too much. Hear that, hear that punch? If we turn it off, with it on. So that's a very quick way of doing it. And finally, tip number 10, another really quick way, this is more of a production technique I guess, but this is a really quick way to have a melodic kind of build up sound, um, a very short simple one uh, leading into a phrase. Now I've got this, these chords here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a reverb on it with a very long decay time. We'll leave it the size at around 100. And I'm going to bring the dry wet of the reverb. This is how much reverb actually is sounded down to zero. So we can't hear anything. And now we're going to automate this line. See if I move the dry wet value uh, uh, line uh, corresponds to the dry wet. I can click on the line and move it up and down as well. We can actually select this area, drag that line, it creates points for us, and we can double click this so we have a ramp, and let's bring it all the way up to 100%, see what happens. And just make sure you bring it down afterwards so that it goes back down to zero when it, you want it to drop. So this is going to sneak in the reverb for us. Um, it's also better, I find, if you don't have a perfect ramp, if you actually add some more points in and draw a bit of a curve. Um, I'm sure curves will be coming soon, Ableton, I'm sure they will be, but in the meantime, it sounds better if you have a sneak up. Even if, if, if it's such a heavy thing, um, like a reverb with a long decay time, you can even make it much more drastic like this. So it kind of uh, sneaks in and then just as, about, as it's about to hit, that's when the, the most punch comes through. So that's it, that's it for this uh, set of tips, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, they were much more production tips this time, and slightly more advanced than last time, but that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep doing these and they're going to get more and more tricky, so uh, yeah, enjoy, tomcosm.com, cheers.